Hello everyone, and welcome to Straight Chewing. Each week we watch and review a horror film for your entertainment. You can send all questions and comments to straightchillingpodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to keep chewing. Shall we straight chillin', serial killin', five cold fillers on the mic, got you reelin', five star ratings from the floor to the ceiling, if you catch a one star, no time for feelings, got a demon DJ, all the ones and twos, by the name El Sabato, don't get confused, so grab a seat by the fire, roast them all over two, and prepare to hear the legend of the straight chillin' crew. <laughs> what up, nerds? Welcome to a very strange episode of Straight Chilling. My name is Bob, and we're going to be talking about The Hidden this evening. Uh, this episode is number 213, recorded on Thursday, May 2nd, 2019. Before we get into the review, let me introduce the one, the only man on the show joining me this evening, calling in all the way from Southern Korea, Soju. What's up, man? What up? It's your boy, Soju. How's it going, buddy? Uh, chilling, just chilling. I was uh, I was speaking with Keep Anthony, chilling. Anthony and uh, Danielle last night, and Anthony yeah. could uh, recite my intro that I do on every episode, <laughs> like like via memory. And I was like, shit, I gotta switch it up, man. I gotta choose different words, nah. or I don't nah, know. It's cool. That's uh, that's because he's trying out for your job. Surprise. Oh. Oh shit! I just got fired as fuck. He's uh he's on our back burner just in case uh you know <laughs> things go south with Bob. You know we we're always threatening to fire him, but it's always been empty threats because we really don't know how shit runs. But you know now that we got <laughs> Anthony on on deck, you know yeah he makes podcasts. He knows what he's doing. I'm on real thin yeah. ice over here at Straight Chilling. I know Bob, so better step it up. Hey, if this is my last show, I'm uh, I'm going down with a ship, taking all you with me, <laughs> taking all you mother truckers with me. Nah. Um, so yeah, Randy Gandy can't make it this evening. He is currently driving cross country yet again, the mother trucker. Um, but uh, before I forget, talking about the hidden this evening, like I already mentioned, big shout out to Hydraberg. This is Hydraberg's Patreon pick. Um, so thanks again, man, for uh, supporting us and uh, choosing a movie that I'd never fucking heard of. Didn't know anything about the hidden. Hail Hydraberg. Hail Hydraberg. Of course. Um, I I don't know. I remember last time we opened up our movie pick, and I like feel pretty confident that Hydraberg was the first one to snag one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, they they shockingly all went very very quickly. <laughs> like two, I think two of them went before we even announced that it was already open, and then yeah. and then like within the next few hours, the rest were taken very quick. Much love, much love to all y'all. Thanks for yeah. He- you know why? Because Hydraberg's fucking hard with us, you know, bro? <laughs> He's, uh, he ain't fucking around. He ain't no fucking poser, you know? <laughs> Are you hard with us? Are you a real straight <laughs> chilling crew? <laughs> I think it's our pitch. It makes me think of like muscle milk. <laughs> <laughs> Fight with the crow. <laughs> <laughs> Crow's milk. Good Lord. Riot punch. Gotta throw, it, gotta throw in the weekly sunny reference. You yeah, know? that's right. Keep it consistent. Uh, before we get on with the show, let's hit up some housekeeping real quick. So the May poll pick has ended and, um, the theme for May was maniacal mothers and the winner was inside the, uh, the, okay. the French, Woo! the, uh, French extreme movie, not, not the uh, American remake, which apparently exists. I just found that out. Um, people but, heard my calls. Yeah. It, it won by one vote, man. It was pretty close between oh, that and Carrie. Somebody came through for you, boy. Shaboy. Shaboy. So do. Thank you, whoever that one vote was. So we're going to be talking about that here in the next uh, few weeks. And um, also broke your streak, Rob. Rob was, uh, what'd you pick, Harry? Rob's thinking yeah. like the past three, even with his nonsense, like reviews of like Hellboy and shit. Y'all just keep giving Rob a platform over here. I don't know well, what y'all think you're. We usually <laughs> don't. Uh, admit right up front who chose what movie. So it's just, you know, it's true. Unbiased, it's true. unbiased. 
Uh, but the, the June poll pick is up on our Patreon uh, website currently. So if you support us at the $5 level or above, you can vote between one of these movies that we're going to be talking about this June. Um, so the theme for June is uh, Korean imports. Looking at you. Ah, uh, yes. I, if, if you're watching the YouTube video, you probably saw my face in which I was like, wait a second. What is the June pick? <laughs> <laughs> because I can't even remember submitting a movie. And now I remember. Yes. We talking Korea. I'm going to shut all my infinite knowledge you know <laughs> pretty much korean now at this point you know you are i can tell much can you see yeah your skin is darker for, the for YouTube. sure <laughs> for sure <laughs> nah so, i'm pale as it the uh the movies we got up there are a tale of two sisters the wailing and thirst so make uh, sure yeah. make sure to cast your vote before the end of may and we'll be talking about one of those in june so far uh, the Wailing is winning handily. Okay. So. I guess we need to keep keep it reserved, so I won't make any comments, but. <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, do you have any YouTube or Twitch news there, Juicy? Dude, we finished up inside. Um, it was a short session, I guess, because of when we're recording there was um uh i guess you know we we were i was recording on mondays and so there was like one extra monday i guess you know in april since i'm sticking with it which was good because i hadn't quite finished the game the week before i like hitting a little past the hour mark i tried to go around an hour and i was like well i think we're getting close to the end but i went to like an hour 10 i was like okay i'm just gonna cut it so we have some for next monday yeah and um and it ended up being like pretty i don't know maybe an extra 15 minutes after that so then i just i wanted to talk about the ending there were like i don't know several people on so and, and participating in the chat so i went ahead and just kind of started playing through another like 15 minutes 15 20 minutes of the beginning again because it just cycles again through let me tell you man inside that shit got wild yeah <laughs> like real wild the last like 20 minutes to me was like really blowing my mind and by the end of it i like like i said i had to talk through it heidelberg was on there there were several people on there we were like talking it through (laughs) and i was just like is this the end is this how it (laughs) fucking ended what is going on so i had to talk through it so if you're curious um i haven't uploaded the ending yet um on to youtube but it is available on our twitch so if you want to see me freak out about what the fuck inside made me do for like the last 20 minutes of that game uh actually probably maybe close to 30 minutes it was like it was really bothering me but you know how i get sometimes like things like really get under my skin you've got that like whole circle thing that you've got (laughs) sometimes things just like really bother me um like those like robot dog things or whatever those like robot animals that have no faces and no heads that like crawl up the mountain and they make that sound and they're like those things like really bother me it bothers me on like that level like this is really disturbing and like my imagination is like flying away with me and i could like see where in some terrible dystopian world this would be real and it would be really fucking terrible so skynet yeah, so um, that was inside. It was a pretty cool game overall. Um, it had a cool art design. And the thing was, is like up until that point, it was like pretty straightforward. I mean, there were some interesting things into it, some weird, creepy kind of things. It's, you know, kind of macabre, like kind of dark and like weird, but not like super scary. And then it got to like those last 30 minutes and I was like, what the fuck? It was just <laughs> disturbing fucking disturbing so that was inside so that was our game of april i also realized i have been really slacking on the video game reviews i've been playing these games i'm supposed to review them but i was like out of the country for a while and stuff like that so um this next month i'm gonna like play catch up and then we should be good to go from here on out but uh yeah uh next month may 
I told everybody I would announce the game. Man, it's hard. It's hard getting in because now, like, there's so many. I feel like there's so many good games I want to play. I literally went through, like, the Xbox store, and I started marking things. I was like, wish list, wish list, wish yeah. list. And I was like, okay, there's only 12 months in the year, and, like, I have to pace this out, and there's certain games I want to do. And now, like, I feel like a lot of the ones I've done, like, people are like, oh, that's such a good game. That's such a good game. That's such a good game. So I feel like they're, like, people that are familiar with them that I've already played them so I was like let me maybe try to pick something maybe a little more obscure that maybe people haven't picked up that I didn't really know I had to like do some research so um, I picked a game that looks really interesting I tried to do Bioshock last month uh, but it wouldn't let me so I kind of jones in for that kind of aesthetic the old school old school kind of look and I want to make sure I get the name right so I picked a game that I had actually never heard of. It's called Bindi and the Ink Machine. Bindi right. and the Ink Machine. And it's got this old school aesthetic. That's what it's kind of making me think of uh, Bioshock. But the whole premise is like you're in this old school like cartoon factory, essentially. So it's like think like old school, like Mickey Mouse shit, you know, like black and white. Uh, I think it's in like 1929 or some shit. Cool. But um, it's it looks like it's got some really cool aesthetic, um, some really interesting like storylines. So I thought maybe something a little more obscure would be fun for this month i've highlighted some more classics for the rest of the year some people have been hitting me up about some different games so i um i have a list i would like to cover many things so this month we're gonna do a game called bindi and the ink machine so i'm excited about that that sounds really cool yeah i'm excited um you know, video games like offer such a unique, cool, different aesthetic to horror that you don't, you know, like the idea of this, like, I don't know, like even Bioshock, they're like, oh, we're going to make a movie. I was like, you know, the game is so good in itself. Yeah. You know, there's there's something video games can capture that you can't really capture in cinema with budgets and stuff like that. And even with the protagonists and stuff. So I've I've been enjoying playing through these games. It's it gives a cool kind of different, unique perspective on the horror genre. So check us out on Twitch if you want. Twitch.tv forward slash straight chilling podcast and then of course i always try to upload the um the videos onto youtube as well for the uh for the gameplay and the walkthroughs if you're interested in that also all the posters were sent off um so if you won our poster giveaway last time your posters are currently in the mail god knows where they are (laughs) but somewhere they're on the way to you hopefully and um i it looks like I'll try to make a preemptive like announcement. It looks like Brightburn might be the next one that we do because I've already got posters. So at some point it's coming out in Korea and I think we plan on covering it. So um, Brightburn should be our next poster giveaway. If you're interested in that too, hit us up on our YouTube. Keep an eye out for Brightburn. Super mad horror movie. Yeah. The poster. Stay tuned. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited about that movie. It looks pretty sweet. It's the kid with his mask, and I was reading about like James nice. Gunn making the mask and stuff like that, but we'll save it for the cast. <laughs> All right. I, I. Um, so yeah, just another reminder. We're doing the Joe Bob live watch party still. Uh, we're doing one uh, this Friday. Uh, it starts at 9 o'clock. We're going to post a link to join our watch party on our Facebook page and on Twitter just before showtime. Um, so make sure you hop on that, watch along with us. It's been fun, man. I've been loving it. I think, um, after Joe Bob's, uh, little run here, his little nine week run, somebody's going to have to talk me off the ledge, man. I don't know. What am I going to no do? What am I going to do with my Fridays? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe go to the local orgy party. I don't know. Ah, the local orgy, the neighborhood the local one. orgy. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I haven't been to one of those since Joe Bob started and, uh, yeah. I need to, I need really to get in there. The group. Yeah. yeah. I need to get in there. All that. I need to get my shunting back. Get right. Yeah. Get get right in <laughs> Your shunting practice in. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Stella got her shunt back. Also, um, There is a local uh, filmmaker by the name of Royce Freeman. Uh, He made a movie. It's another genre picture, which this is like the third genre picture in like less than a year that's been like completely created locally here in Jacksonville, Florida. And it's getting, um, they're doing a red carpet event here at Sunray Cinema on May 7th at 7 o'clock. 
Um, and they're going to have a Q&A following the showing. Um, so definitely turn out, uh, support, Roy, uh, support Royce and his whole crew. Um, check out his movie In Utero. Um, and uh, definitely show some love to some local filmmakers. And, of course, uh, Sunray Cinema because they are dope. Cool, cool. Yeah. Good old locals killing it in Saxonville. Saxonville. Cool. That Are is. Are we going to talk NFL draft now, Bob? I uh, almost. Jag- Jaguars grading. <laughs> I almost started getting into it. I was like, no, no, I won't do it. So it's in the Jags cast. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> not yet. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much it for our housekeeping. Let's go ahead and get into what we've been watching this week. Hey, gang, what you been watching? What up, Juice? What you been watching, man? Oh, you know, the big ones. You got to knock out the big ones. Of course, the GOT, the GAT. Yeah. Um, cover that. Um, it's good. It's good. Um, I'm curious. I don't know. I, I hope, I hope, like, I feel satisfied by the end of the show. You know, it's one of those things. Eight years and plus, like, a year in between, like, a season. So, really, yeah. I guess nine years. Yeah. Um, it's a long fucking time. <laughs> That's, like, a really long fucking time. I can't believe it's been that long. Almost as long as I'm- this damn Marvel run. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. So I'm a little worried about it ending. Like, there's just three episodes left, and I'm like, I hope I'm feeling good by the end of this. You know, <laughs> we've been through, we've we we, we live through the lost, you know, moment. Yeah, so yeah. we've been there. Um, so I'm I enjoyed it, but you know, I'm I'm like, it's a little sad to see it in. I'm also like a little like, oh, I hope you know everything. I don't know. I hope I'm digging it, but so of course the GOT can't drop them spoilers you never know yeah uh, of course the end game another like 11 year run of something finally kind of coming to an end and i feel good like i feel good about like i'll i'll, I'll watch spider-man um coming up but by the end of end game like i was like i feel good about like not following everything anymore <laughs> like yeah i feel a lot. i feel okay now like and i i generally just like to go to the movies so you know maybe i'll just like pop in anyways and like i said i i like the spider-man character and what they've done with it so i'll check that out this summer but i don't feel like inclined to be like let me go watch like the third Ant Man, you know, like or so, like I feel okay if I don't see it, you know. Um, You'll be whereas, okay. Like, what? Well, watching this movie though, I really appreciated. I was like, you know, I've watched every Marvel movie in theaters for the past goddamn eleven years, but like everything, like kind of culminated. They like it kind of blows my mind that they like kind of brought it all in. You yeah. know, it's kind of nuts. They like those damn dudes between these two movies, like Infinity War and um, and Endgame. Like they did it like a damn good job, man. And the thing is, the movies are like pretty different between themselves. Like years from now, like the like the series ending. Like if you're like, I'm gonna watch the Endgame show or whatever. Those two movies, like they're pretty different. Um, so, but both good in their own ways. So I was pleased. I was happy with what I got. Um, so that was nice to get that being worried about GOT, not blowing. Yeah, it you, you got one, you're covered at least on one. So the other one yeah, exactly. remains to be seen. And people keep throwing like star Wars in there too. Yeah. for Like the end of this year. And I'm like, mm. yeah, that kind <laughs> I mean, of ended yeah, I mean, in return sure, of the Jedi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, so really got's all I got. Um, and I haven't finished it yet, but I started watching the the purge i think netflix has like all the purges on right now and i forgot that they dropped one like a year or two ago with the um yeah. the first purge yeah, or whatever yeah. i was like really forgot and that one showed up so i was like well let me watch these so I, i've started watching the purge i haven't fished it and let me go ahead and say um and this isn't like an account like of what i'll think of the movie overall yet or anything but ethan hawk is in that and then fucking cersei lance do we're fucking watching guy right now yeah and um so far, it's like really just shows how much directing can affect things, how much a director. Because right now, like, 
like it still feels like kind of a cheap horror movie even with these like big baller ass actors in it and actresses and you're like well damn like you know if you can't fucking kill it with e like if you're not blowing my mind <laughs> with a really solid premise of like i think like the purge is like a really really interesting premise and fucking cersei and fucking ethan hawk if you're not just like blowing my mind like a hundred percent of this movie then like mm, you're not doing like a, a a real great job that's my opinion so, so far. <laughs> have, you, have you not seen that or the purge anarchy the second one i haven't the only the first one i saw was that fucking one we covered on the cat that's election actually the year. only one i've seen then yeah. number three yeah. election year and then the first purge yeah. is the fourth one yeah i've seen yeah. the first three i still haven't seen the first purge um I think Anarchy is my favorite of the three that yeah. I've seen. None of them are particularly great. Um, and yeah. then there's that damn TV show now, that Purge TV show, which I haven't seen. I don't I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, I don't know. It has like one season. I don't know if it's going to continue or if it got canceled or what happened, but there's, I think, one season That's aired last year. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so it sucks because I think it's really interesting premise. However, it would never actually work. I feel like if somebody has like murderous inclinations and they actually murdered somebody, I feel like it would be like a drug. You know, I feel like, you know, people, everybody's got their thing, you know, yeah. and they like kind of like wrestle with it and do it. And then it seems like once you get a taste, like you always want more or whatever. That's just the addictive personality of human beings. So it would never, it wouldn't be like, all right, you got to murder somebody for one year. And now there's never any violence. It's like, nah, Problem that solved. would be like, that would be like the edge. That person would be like, I got to like hurt some or something. That's, that's, but it's still a really interesting premise. Yeah. Uh, anything else, man? I think that's about it. Yeah, for this week. What about you, Bob? What you been watching? What you never you, get at. What you been watching? Uh, I watched some. You know, this might come as a surprise, but I got some vinegar syndrome stuff that I've been blasting. Oh, through. okay, Bob. Yeah. So let me let me hear about that. All right, let me tell you about it. I watched a movie you called "I Not Vinegar Syndrome Hard Guy." Yeah? yeah, I don't know, man. I get stuck on a particular label, and I. I don't know. It's uh, vinegar syndrome's time. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> all right. Uh, so I watched a movie called Grandmother's House. Um, it's a uh, it's a 1980s horror movie. It's got um, it it it. If you've seen The Visit, that M Night Shyamalan movie, um, it reminded um. me a lot of The Visit, but it's a little more like fucked up i guess it's a little more extreme oh. than i think what m night uh would would lean into but it's got bring Good. bring stevens in it and she plays um kind of this crazy mother figure and um yeah she the mother figure dies these two kids they go stay with their grandparents and their grandparents are acting very bizarre and they think that um their grandparents might be like murdering people um uh, which is, uh, you know, like I said, very similar to the visit. That but sounds like yeah, Shyamalan. <laughs> yeah, but it's um, I enjoyed it quite a bit, man. It's uh, okay. <laughs> it's goofy. It's got some decent kills, and like the grandparents are actually adequately creepy, and the kids aren't bad actors. It's like I feel like it's a little better than it has the right to be. Um, but I definitely, if you like the visit, I would definitely recommend checking it out. Faux show. Um, I also watched a movie called The Suckling. <laughs> okay if they're not yabos in a movie called the suckling somebody fucked up so man i honestly don't even remember if they're yabos if if there were it wasn't like a lot uh, somebody fucked up yeah it's so this movie the premise of this movie is is incredibly fucked up um but it's very much like a, a horror comedy movie so basically uh there's this like uh, younger couple um, and they get pregnant and the girl, um, she wants to keep the baby, but the guy doesn't. She kind of gets sort of drugged and uh, forced to have an abortion, which is pretty heinous. Um, and then they throw the baby down the toilet and it goes into the gutter and gets covered in this like toxic waste and turns into this crazy fucking monster that just God like damn. murders everybody in a whorehouse. Oh Lord. So, in a whorehouse. <laughs> uh -huh. That all sounds very heavy, but it's, it's played very 
light, like tongue in cheek, as tongue in cheek as that can be. Anyways, um, um, sometimes I worry about your psyche, Bob. Yeah, that's that, that's fair. <laughs> that's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> I've been gone too long, Bob. Somebody's got to pull you out of the mud. You see what happens when you leave me. <laughs> see what happens. Um, the uh, the creature is played by Mike Gingold, who who's like uh, one of the OG writers for Fangoria, and this was like one of the first things he worked on, which I thought was kind of a pretty neat uh, little bit of trivia about it. And if you are curious about this movie, it's streaming on Amazon Prime for free, so you can put your eyeballs on it pretty, hey. pretty easily. Um, and uh, the last thing but I want to... you bought it from I Vinegar did, Syndrome. I did buy it from Vinegar Syndrome. <laughs> It could have a movie about an aborted fetus being flushed down the toilet and killing an entire horror house could have been viewed for free on Amazon Prime. <laughs> but Bob got the 4K well, Blu-ray steel box from Vinegar. Syndrome. I appreciate what these companies do and I want to support them. So I choose All to right. do so. Not everybody does and that's fine. Um, the last thing I want to mention <laughs> is uh, this show on Netflix I just started watching. It's uh, called Street Food. Um, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's relatively new, but it's like uh, it's it's similar to that of an Anthony Bourdain show, which I'm fuck. I fucking love Anthony Bourdain, um, and just kind of travel type shows in general. Um, so this obviously focuses on like street food vendors, and um, the first episode is like in Bangkok, and the second one is uh, I think it's in Osaka, and it just kind of focuses on these people who. They they seemingly at least the first two episodes they kind of they kind of come from nothing and pull themselves up by their bootstraps and make these these little uh, like crazy successful um, food carts and um, <laughs> the guy who's who's in Japan he cooks his food with like a fucking flamethrower like a torch and he keeps like a bucket of ice water next to his grill and he just he rests <laughs> his hand in it so that whenever he it's, it's time to like flip the, the the meat he just sticks his hand under the flame and flips it so like his hand is cold Holy and doesn't shit. get burnt it's oh my god he like refuses to use tongs because it'll rip the the meat and he won't have it it's just like crazy he won't have it. crazy stuff like that i find that cra- super interesting and like their, their dedication nuts, to to making this food i just I don't know. Something about that. I really love watching it, and um, I've been enjoying that so far. So check that dude, out, dude. Whenever you goddamn visit me in Seoul, dude, working at street food out here is Legit. dank, dude. Yeah. It is baller, woo, dude. And there's like so many different places you can go, and any event has it out, and it's not like that bullshit where you go to like some fucking like baseball game and everything's like twenty dollars. Hell not, nah, <laughs> dude. That's like street. They keep the street food prices. It's, oh man, street food's dope. If anybody's in Seoul, <laughs> you better hit up your boy. Yeah, boy. Uh, yeah, he's he's in the phone book under uh, Stains, comma Tom Cruise. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mister Cruise Stains. Yeah, boy. So yeah, okay, that's it for what I've been watching. Let's go ahead and get into the main event. We're talking about the hidden tonight. Start off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? All right. The Hidden from 1987, uh, which is listed on IMDb as an action. Oh, pro- the year. Action. The year of our Lord. <laughs> Check this Stains. out. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> so this movie is listed on IMDb as an action crime horror movie. They actually put horror on this wow. movie, but did not which include some- it on American Psycho. Wow, because yeah, this is thin. I mean, I, I mean, I guess we'll, yeah, we'll talk yeah, about it, but yeah, yeah. but yeah, to include horror, yeah, it's shocking because they almost never do. And if you were to include it, I don't know that this would be the first movie I would choose to include it on. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So the uh the plot synopsis is as follows: Law-abiding people suddenly become violent criminals. A cop and an FBI agent race for answers in this sci-fi thriller. Directed by Jack Shoulder, starring Kyle MacLachlan, Michael Norrie, Claudia Christian, and some other fun people that make some cameos throughout the runtime of the movie. So, um, again, this was chosen by uh, Hyderberg, the one, the only Hyderberg. Hail Hyderberg. Um, Hail Hyderberg. Never seen it before. Really didn't know anything about it. Uh, what about you, Juice? Uh, what did you have in your brain going into this, and would you recommend people check it out? 
nothing and i wanted to keep it that way i yeah. once like we get these patreon picks and i don't know anything about them i literally just go in blind and i like it it's nice like it's nice feeling that way um not even seeing a trailer or anything so um yeah i watched it um for the so for the first time and um if you like um 80s like um it feels like an 80s like cop action drama but it, i mean mm-hmm. it does it, but it's got this sci-fi thing thrown in that we'll talk about but um if you like that style it's that style and it's like pretty funny um and it's the acting's good in it um not to get too far into the rear or anything so i mean if you like that style if you like that type of movie then i would definitely recommend you check it out yeah i totally agree with everything you just said i i um purposefully didn't watch a trailer for this i just kind of wanted to to let it hit me and i'm glad i did and i recommend the hell out of it yeah just be aware that it's not a straight up horror movie and you're gonna get um some action sci-fi 80s goodness and if you're down with that definitely uh put this shit on your eyeballs um to borrow a phrase from uh jim g baby guenza from our uh, slack channel this movie uh fucking dumps whoa it dumps it dumps a straight a straight quote mm-hmm yeah okay yeah <laughs> jim baby you got a poster coming <laughs> to you baby i like wrote it on there i was like writing it up <laughs> you got a poster coming to you baby so yeah uh, uh uh yeah watch this shit for sure i dig it um i'm gonna go and drop the spoiler warning and we'll get into the rest of the review spoiler warning the hidden so this movie like the first thing the first scene of this movie kind of like really puts you in a perfect mindset for what you're about to get yourself into it really does it's you're following this guy who like robs a bank uh he's like driving down the street in this like crazy sports car the cops are chasing him he's like blowing people away uh (laughs) just it seems like he's coked out of his mind doesn't give a shit he's just got like i think the first thing that happens while he goes in like just to the bank blows bitches away grabs some money gets in his sports car but throws in the fucking cassette tape yeah to 11 dude (laughs) fucking rocking (laughs) out that opening scene like the first 10 minutes of this like had me like really like pleased i was just like I am really digging this so far. Like I just, especially going into a movie, having no expectation or whatever, and just seeing like the first 10 to 15 minutes, it just was like off the rails, you know, straight away, fucking wild blasting bitches away. It was pretty funny. Like it was, it was like a fun ride to, you know, kind of kick us off. Yeah. It's got like, it's when it first starts, like one of the, one of the first things I, I that like popped into my head was like, this is one of the moviest fucking movies I've ever seen. <laughs> they even do that gag that I can't remember the last time I saw it, but like they've got these two workers carrying this huge pane of glass across the street and the car yeah. flies right through it. I was like, right through it. I don't know where that started, but for some reason I kind of love that shit. It's just <laughs> yeah. like s- such a fucking like movie trope. <laughs> It's like the tropiest it, trope. Yeah, it started off with like the bank robbery and like the crazy car chasing, like and with the rock music, like, and it yeah. was all just like it was all like giving you a spectacle that you would want and expect, I guess. Yeah, and it does. So like the the guys running from the cops, the cops finally like roadblock him. It gets in a wreck. He gets out of the car, um, and they just sort of like open fire and kill him. And they shoot his vehicle. No. And, yeah, <laughs> and just like in in fucking American Psycho, where he shoots the cop car, the car just explodes, but nobody I, I makes a weird shit. face. You know, yeah, it's oh, like oh yeah, it's classic. Like even with the car exploding, like from beginning to end, this whole opening scene is such a cliche, but taken like to eleven. Yeah, like it reminded me of that, but it also reminded me of like. You know, that sounds like maybe it's not so good, but it reminded me of what's that movie where the dude hooks like the battery up to his heart and he, it just like goes crank. full blast. And, yeah, crank. Yeah. It reminded me of crank because I remember when we first went into crank, we were like, oh, this is going to be dumb or whatever. But when you lean into it, like yeah. when you know that that's what you want to do and you just make it that like when you go full into the trope and you go full into the genre like that's it then it like can be really good and that's what it kind of reminded me of like yeah. crank like where they just go like full into it and it's like fucking nuts spectacle and like kind of funny because you 
you know that they know like everybody knows it's yeah. not like they're trying to no shame you or anything no shame yeah yeah that shit's fun man i so that's kind of the introduction of the movie so you're like okay i'm along for this fucking ride now and yeah. you're introduced uh to uh lloyd gallagher who's like an fbi agent he's a uh, played by Kyle McLaughlin. He's sort of like the, the protagonist, the guy you followed the rest of the movie. And um, him and this, uh, this detective, this like reluctant ass detective, uh, Thomas Beck, they're like teamed up and they're supposed to go f- uh, um, find this guy, this guy who went on this crazy rampage. And um, you come to sort of find out that this alien entity has been like jumping from body to body. And um, Beck is aware of it. And he's been sort of following this entity and obviously doesn't want to, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, Gallagher, the FBI agent has been following this entity and like, doesn't share the information with Beck right up front because you know, it's a fucking alien. So you're along for this like crazy ass ride. And um, as the movie goes along, the alien jumps from body to body and he sort of like continues to do this crazy ass shit. Like he has this inexplicable like uh, pension for Ferraris. Like, yeah, and I think they're like all red too. Like everything he does like is red, I think. Yeah, and he <laughs> he's like trying to, he's trying to like cruise on chicks and he... Um, what is he? He goes into that. Uh, I think one of my favorite scenes in this. He goes into the record shop, and he just like kills the the clerk, and he steals a ghetto blaster, and then he yeah. he carries it into a diner, and he's just like calmly eating his meal, and he's got the ghetto blaster on his table, just like cranking out these jams, and everybody's obviously annoyed with him, and he just doesn't give a shit. I don't That's know. That's also when he's just like farting his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he, I guess he like steals a body, but it's like a guy in the hospital, obviously, and so he's like all fucked up, but like it carries over, like he doesn't make. So it shows that like he's just kind of like chilling in a body until it. I think even at one point they say like until it's like not usable anymore. So it's not Mm -hmm. like he makes it, but uh, it kind of goes back and forth because it also seems like he he makes them super strong. Like he, you know, like he is super strong. Um, and then people like shoot up bodies and like, they have to shoot them like 20 times before they actually go down. But I was surprised. I honestly was surprised when, um, they show, cause right after we get that crazy opening scene, the dude's chilling in the hospital and like, we like see the body switch. Yeah. Like they don't shy away from it or anything. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. I thought they did it well. Like I was like, Holy shit. It's like this like, giant slug looking thing. Yeah. And it comes out of the dude's mouth and then it goes into the other one and they like show it's not like a pan away and like it's implied. Yeah. You, oh, you know, he like took over the body. Like they show it all and it actually looks pretty solid for what it is. Yeah. It reminded me uh, a, a bit of the Tingler, the creature from the Tingler, you know? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, th- yeah. This movie's like Invasion of the Body Snatchers meets the Tingler. <laughs> That's like what it reminds or me of. Animorphs. You remember that shit? <laughs> I do remember that shit. <laughs> How could I forget? Throwback. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was like looking at my notes here. I wanted to see if there was anything that was like um another thing like it kind of reminded me of the way that he operates too at least I, I noticed it more specifically in the second body but i thought each actor and actress that did it like did it pretty well because there's a way that like people kind of look or move when the monsters in them and they are able to keep a pretty like consistent kind of look even between like several different actors and actresses yeah. you know like um and what it kind of reminded me of is fucking men in black um the edgar is hanging off your bones yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that kind of look look at like when um k says like he's rolling around in a brand new edgar suit like that's what <laughs> it kind of reminded me of because it looks like a little awkward or like he he doesn't quite have complete control or he's like a little awkward in each one of the bodies and um that's kind of cool that they were able to keep that like pretty consistent but it like it kept reminding me of these things that i realized like it predated but that like it may be inspired or something i don't know because it like really made me think of men in black 
Yeah, I didn't think about that, but that's a really solid point, actually. The way he's just, like, going through the streets, doing whatever the fuck he wants to do. I love that they kind of... Like, the alien, he talks a little bit. He, he doesn't talk a whole heck of a lot, but, like, they kind of start to build this personality of, like, this creature. <laughs> and yeah. it, it's, like, a complete 100% fucking cooter, right? Like... Oh, well, we'll get to it. Yeah. But, yeah. but no, yeah, it is. And I... Uh, I can't help but think that Hyderberg did this shit on purpose. Because, dude, also, Hyderberg picked, um... He picked uh, the entity. Uh-huh. Wait, is that the name of the yeah, movie? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. our first like paranormal cooter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we're talking our first like extraterrestrial cooter. I think Hyderberg, I think he's got an agenda here, which is I'm I'm cl- I'm completely on board with, you know. Yeah. We got to get our hunt got to get our hunting on but um but no yeah he's like because even with the second body he's um like you said he's trying to pick up chicks to the point where he just yeah. is like fuck it and like goes to the strip club and or whatever and yeah. <laughs> he becomes and a woman fun. himself yeah then he takes over a woman's body and then that gets nuts because then he's just like fucking people and like feeling himself up yeah. and shit like uh, and then oh and also like the outfit the reason i said the red is because then he throws on that crazy stripper outfit where the ass is hanging yeah, out that's right. yeah. <laughs> that shit is, and it's all like red pleather or whatever um that shit doesn't breathe bob no it doesn't um, especially in florida <laughs> don't don't wear pleather in florida Ooh, but um yeah another thing it reminded me of god damn, i didn't know randy was gonna be missing either me and bob totally like missed the mark on yeah this. hydroberg somehow knew that what we didn't know um <laughs> that uh randy you know is moving across but one thing it reminded me of too is there's this episode of Futurama where they do like a what if scenario. They're able to like look into this machine and it's almost like an alternate reality or whatever. And there's one where the professor is able to turn Bender into a human. So Bender's a robot, but they make him a human. And so he's able to like taste things for the first time and he's able to like have sex for the first time. And so he just like goes ridiculously like buck wild. And that's like, and he does essentially like what whatever the fuck he wants. And that's what it kind of reminded me of like this alien, like getting a hold of a human body and be like, fuck yeah, nobody <laughs> can stop me. Like yeah. there's no, like there's nothing. So he just kills people. He just fucks people. He just, he goes to the diner and like eat like, that's what he does. He just like does everything that anybody wants to do with no regard because he just jumps to another body. He fucking wants a badass sports car. He wants like some badass tunes. He wants like some badass food and like some badass bitches like he just fucking rolls through all of like the top like whatever you want shit and it's pretty fun like it's a pretty funny spectacle it is yeah there's a certain point uh in the movie where you come to find out that the fbi agent uh, gallagher he he's an alien as well and the reason he like the primary reason he's hunting uh this crazy murderous alien is that the alien killed his quote partner and then also like his wife and child so he's just basically out for revenge and they um they have this uh moment where they finally meet up and uh the bad aliens like you know we could take over this place if we really wanted to and then they just sort of he pieces out and then he there's a senator coming to town who's like giving a speech and he just like his goal from that point on is to take over the senator's body and um, eventually, like, you know, become president. And I kind of like how it's almost like the alien has just been, like, playing with its food up until this point, like, just enjoying yeah, himself. until it realizes. And, yeah, it's like, you know, how many how many Ferraris are you going to steal? How many people are you going to kill? How many banks are you going to rob? Like, you can only do it so many times. And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm taking over this joint. This, this whole fucking planet is going to be mine. I'm starting with the president of the United States. Let's go. Like, he just starts yeah. going towards that direction and i kind of like how this this super like slapsticky movie almost takes a bit of a turn and get gets a little more serious because right right before he jumps into the center's body he he makes like three or four more jumps and he's just like leaving this crazy trail of murdered people behind him like as he goes he's jumping from yeah. like detective to detective um 
Oh yeah, he ju- yeah he jumps in like the the sergeants, but because oh he yeah. takes over the dog, so he has the like the dog. first dude. He switches in the hospital. Can we talk about uh, that dog for just one second? <laughs> yeah, I fucking love the sergeant's like in his kitchen. He's opening the refrigerator, like getting a snack or whatever, and the dog like fucking bullets through the pane glass in the door <laughs> and straight into the sergeant and knocks him into the refrigerator, and then the sergeant just dies. He's just dead. It, it made me think. <laughs> of um when fucking jason just like throws that dog out the window or whatever but <laughs> that's like, exactly what, part, right man. he goes full, four full jason <laughs> fucking <laughs> Voorhees. yeah the dog just like flies through the fucking door dude like no fucking problem that is yeah, <laughs> that's fucking great man i that uh, happened i had to re- re- rewind for, it and watch i it forgot again. about that but it was funny it cracked me up um the show is nuts. Yeah, so that's the, like the third because oh, so okay, he does the two dudes, so the guy at the beginning, and then switched at the hospital, and then it, that dude goes to the strip club. He takes over the stripper. The stripper has a shootout. She takes over the dog's body. Yeah, dog the, takes over the, the sergeant's body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he like blasts away like a fucking whole squad of um like in the pl- they have a big shootout in the police station. Yeah. And then, that and then there's dude another takes- detective Willis. Take over somewhere? Yeah. Oh yeah, he takes over another detective. And yeah, then yeah, it's yeah. the senator finally. And then yeah, that dude goes to kill the sen- or to take over the senator, and then he takes over the senator, and then yeah. that dude gets blasted with a <laughs> flamethrower. That shit was nuts. <laughs> the way they even introduce that is nuts. Somewhere just like through the middle of the movie, some random cop just strolls through the room. It's like, look what I picked up off of this random dude on the street. Like some dude just strolling around with this fucking flamethrower on the yeah. goddamn street. And they're all <laughs> laughing about it. <laughs> That's so crazy. That's never gonna then, come back in this movie. We'll never see that again. and then all it takes is like fucking cherry pie picks up the old and he just, just picks it up no he doesn't have to do a heist or anything and he yeah. strolls through blast that dude i can't even i had to double check with bob i was like is this the dude from fucking twin peaks yeah because i watched twin peaks when i first came to korea so it's been almost two years ago but i guess this was even a few years before that um old cherry pie that guy he's um he's a particular kind of guy he is, yeah. I I still need to watch Twin Peaks, so I don't have any sort of like sweet spot for Kyle McLaughlin. Like I don't dislike him, but yeah. but him being in this movie doesn't add to this movie to me in any way. It's just he's just no, an actor. It, yeah. Even like once I recognized him, like I I watched Twin Peaks and I enjoyed um, most of it. Well, season two was it got really rough, but. Um, the first season I really enjoyed, but even then I was like, "Is this that guy?" Oh yeah, it is. I mean, he's not like. I don't know. In this movie, he he plays what he's doing is he's trying to play an alien that's trying to pretend a human. So really, he keeps his emote like there's it's not like he's like doing crazy yeah. dynamic things. In fact, the cop or whatever, the main detective was like a much more dynamic and like relatable character or whatever. The other guy is supposed to be awkward and like offstand it. Like you're not really supposed to understand him. He's supposed to be like an alien or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, so in that kind of, from what I've seen of Twin Peaks, it seems like that's almost the exact same character in Twin. I don't know if that's just like him and how he how he does. Yeah, his thing. the same, he is kind of like well, and he's definitely got more personality into Twin Peaks. He's more humorous. He's more like uh, detective. Like he's got like interesting thoughts, um, but he is still kind of like kind of outside of the crowd. You know, kind of yeah. like a particular particular kind of person. So yeah, maybe that's just what that guy does. Um, I don't even know if I've seen him in anything else. So yeah, it didn't, it wasn't like, I was like, Oh, that guy. And it like sealed the movie for me. Yeah. I just have yeah. to recognize him. Yeah. I'm the same, same way. There's also like, I, like I mentioned at the top, there's some pretty neat cameos in this movie. Um, like Lynn Shay kind of shows up for a minute. She's like working with a Senator and, uh, yeah. there's uh Oh, what's his face? Uh, Danny Trejo. Is in it for yeah, like two I'm seconds, not, right? Yeah, and then he gets and the killed. Prey gets blasted yeah. away in the jail. Yeah, damn, you're right. Forgot about that. So that's kind of cool. I, I love seeing Lin Shay pop up and stuff. Like she has had yeah. such a massive career. Like it's easy to forget how much shit she's done, but she's everywhere, man. Yeah, you're right. She is. She kind of pops up. And you're like, oh yeah, there she is. There, there she uh, is. Yeah. 
maybe this was um wait no she dies doesn't she or maybe not i was like maybe this um some kind of prequel to the uh <laughs> it's part of the Wanaverse. everything is part <laughs> of the Wanaverse now it has to be part of the one did you see annabelle there's an annabelle fucking cameo in this movie did you see it no are you serious no i'm just kidding no i know no, okay. i know <laughs> damn damn you got me are you, like like that would even excite me are you oh man i missed the annabelle you didn't she sound that excited you didn't sound that excited <laughs> now you're now you're trolling me yeah uh, i know but uh, yeah fuck that we've covered that enough <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's um so let's like you see <laughs> uh, finish kind of finish the end of this so like the yeah the alien transfers into the senator you got like fbi shows up he's got his little like alien ray gun he shoots him with that and then flamethrower boom bad aliens dead um but uh beck who's like our our normal police officer um he gets uh shot pretty good actually and it ends, yeah. up, ends up dying which is like pretty like anti hollywoodish you know like he's like yeah. the family man in in, yeah. a, in like a movie ass movie like this, I wouldn't have really expected that to happen. Um, he's a okay. Well, they they even did like kind of the ambiguous kind of thing though, and they did yeah. it like decent. And I mean, for a movie like this, it's not like a real thinker, so it's not like yeah. I'm really like spending time like, oh, was it or wasn't it? Yeah. But I mean, they did the whole thing where like, so you know, this other dude's an alien, but he's like you, th- you assume he's different, like he's not a slug or something like that. Um, so, but you know, he could take over bodies. You don't really know what his kind of deal is, old cherry pie guy, and. So at the end of this movie, he visits our cop and he's still in the hospital. He's not dead yet, but he's like dying. And there's like this beam that like shoots out from his mouth. So it it literally either could be like, okay, he took over this dude's body and he's going to take care of his family or whatever you want to say. Or you could be like, ah, he's got some kind of he sacrificed himself to save the dad. It doesn't really matter. (laughs) Um, I took it as uh, him transferring like his his soul into the the dead dude's body because you know he like lost his wife and his kid the alien did yeah and that's sort of like his way of getting his family back and like really having closure in the whole matter and he's also sort of like able to be there for the little girl so she doesn't have to you know grow up without a dad but the little girl kind of like looks over at yeah. what used to be her father and she's got giving him kind of the side eye like she fucking she's she's on to him she knows what's going down. Um, which is the same thing she did when like the dude visits the cop's house earlier like they're yeah. like oh say hey and she's like uh this dude's mm-hmm. fucked up or whatever like she <laughs> knows he's an alien so that's the thing but then at the end what she like takes his hand or something so that's that's how i took it as well that yeah. the alien took over the dude's body and he's just gonna like yeah, take the family or whatever but um you know it it kind of gave you a little bit of an ambiguous ending but yeah. it's it really could go either way it doesn't matter it honestly. doesn't yeah, it's like ambiguous <laughs> ambiguous enough it's it's yeah it was an intriguing ending i'm glad it wasn't like totally stock you know yeah yeah and he bought he's got his crazy alien guy and the slug comes out of the center because he got his ass torched yeah um and then the slug he shoots him with this like alien gun and it fucking explodes <laughs> they love spectacle in this movie dude like everything they just like go ham on dude caught like on fire with a flamethrower is like running around on stage for a solid like minute just dude on fire and then burning to death it's like this shit gets nuts yeah 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 it does. And then alien slug explosion the fucking shootout at the cop thing or whatever the cops are like stalking him through the hallways and shit like that <laughs> it's just wild it's like it's like the tingler meets invasion of the body snatchers meets lethal weapon yeah, and but here's the thing about it. I mean, maybe I guess I was about to say if if it didn't have the horror element attached, like if it didn't, if you didn't know there was a slug like, attached, this yeah. probably like might hold more weight as far as like the action genre of the eighty goes because like they did everything really well. Like that car chase scene is yeah. probably like one of the best fucking car chase scenes you're gonna see. They catch a dude on fire, they fucking blow up shit. So I mean, if it weren't for the horror aspect, it didn't have as much of a reputation 
reputation for like, you know, respectability as it does now, this might be more like held in high regards because it like was a dope action movie like like they did it really well it's just got that sci-fi like twist on it too which i think like in a general audience sense probably like brings it down but i mean as far as like 80s action movie goes it's like done really well pretty solid pretty solid yeah yeah do you have anything specific to mention before we rate it i think we kind of touched on all the main parts of it yeah i mean that's a story um but now i mean i guess i'll get into some particulars um i'll get into some particulars with the rating i guess we can we can rate it okay yeah all right uh why don't you kick us off man out of five how you feeling about the hidden so the hidden um the opening scene i was like i was pleased i was like really intrigued and i was like all right this is you know I'm, I'm ready to ride this ride. Um, they carry me through. And for the most part, I really enjoyed that ride. Um, apart from that, the I thought the lead actor did a good job, the main detective who are following. Um, like Rob said, like the other guy was fine, the guy from Twin Peaks, but because he's supposed to be kind of weird, like that's what he is. So he's not like super relatable or anything. So I didn't feel like super attached to him. Um, and... The only, the thing I the kind of beef I guess I do have with this movie is so I got that baller opening scene um, and then and then a little bit more once like the um, the alien transfers bodies and stuff like that. However, it like it got to a point like toward the end when he's like taking over the center's body. I was like, this is the fifth time I've seen this. Like, so once like every time it switches bodies, it's kind of like the same deal. Like, okay, he switches bodies. He goes and get it. Oh, we didn't even talk about where he goes and gets like a shit ton of guns oh, um, yeah. because we forgot he took over that like drug dealer's body or whatever. I think That's we forgot right. to mention him um, when he steals the car. But, um, like so each time it's kind of like the same thing take over a body steal some shit have a shootout die take over another body steal some shit and get in a shootout die take over like i mean we see that shit play out like several times and so by the time it actually gets to the center and he's like taking over his like sixth or seventh body by this point i'm just like okay like I've seen it like Mm -hmm. I just saw it at the police station. I saw it on the rooftop. I saw it like I've seen it, you know, Um, thing. It started to get repetitive to me and it like each time the hit. It wasn't as like, you know, like it started off real with the first car chasing because that was the first one I saw and each time it kind of like dipped down and couldn't quite get as high again and then like dipped down is like a fucking roller coaster but it never could hit the peak um, as the as the first scene in the beginning so um, so it did once it got toward the end it started to feel a little tedious um, I thought they wrapped it up well though and the idea of it like wanting to take over like the presidency kind of added more depth to this alien who at this point was really just kind of like trying to like eat and fuck his way to pleasure, you know, just kind of doing whatever he wanted to. So, um, I, I enjoyed the movie. Um, horror aspect is slim um it's got a sci-fi twist because it's got like a slug but i mean it's pretty much like a an action it's an action movie with a slight sci-fi twist um and i think i'm gonna give it a i think i'm gonna end on a three star i ended on a three star i liked it um it didn't blow my mind but it was good and i'll remember it fondly cool yeah, that was actually my biggest complaint as well, is the repetitive nature of this movie. Uh, the plot itself just sort of it gets regurgitated over and over again. And there, um, you know, the stakes do rise towards the end, but it takes a while to get there. 
And uh, yeah. pretty much as soon as he becomes the senator, he gets killed. So like if he had yeah. become a senator like halfway through the movie in the second act or something, and then like he actually starts convincing people and like, you know, changing laws or something. And then it, it the story yeah, kind of evolved yeah. into more. That could have been interesting. Because then it was harder to get to him. Yeah. Because then he had like, the, the, which was a cool plot point because you're like, oh, now he's like protected yeah. by human beings or whatever. But you're right. They didn't explore that. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was sort of like the, the end um, point instead of like the yeah. halfway point or whatever. Um, but I don't know, kind of like, kind of like I already said, like this is, this movie is just like such fun. It's like the movie is fucking movie. It's got like a bank robbery, like explosions, fucking like a bazooka and grenades, yeah. like a little alien, like Ray gun, a flamethrower. Oh my God. It's got the fucking like tingler monster, like, all, yeah. all, just all kinds of explosions and shit. It's just like, so it's a ton of fucking fun to watch. And I'm like pretty surprised, especially cause like we've been doing, you know, we, like we seek out movies pretty regularly and we've been doing the podcast for like almost five years now and like how none of us had seen this and really didn't know anything Holy about shit. it. It's just kind of surprising to me. Um, so it was, it was a pleasant surprise for sure. And I'm, I'm glad uh, to have watched it. Yeah. Um, it's not, there's not, uh, much more than just like pure fucking spectacle going on here, but it's very self-aware and it, it sort of does what it's trying to do. And I had a really good time watching it other than the fact that it's sort of a, the, the plot sort of uh, gets a little stale because it is very repetitive. Um, I think that's sort of my biggest complaint, but I'm, I think I'm going to give it a four. Um, that's really the only negative I have for it. Um, and it's not, it's not heady at all, man. It's just a straight up popcorn movie and it's, it's, um, it's fun, man. It's good. Good movie. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Randy Gandy G Landy, um, was not here this week, obviously, but he did send us in a, uh, pre-recorded review here as we tend to do. Um, I think it's about 10 minutes long. So I'm going to go ahead and play Randy's thoughts for you guys. Um, and we'll get back to it after we hear from Randy. So here we go. It's Randy. Um, I literally just got done watching this movie about three minutes ago. So apologies if this is going to be a little rambly and a little bit disorienting, but uh, I only have a minute to do this. So uh, really quickly, uh, this movie is pretty good, I thought. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, I wouldn't say that it's uh, much of a thinker, <laughs> but uh, as far as like like sci-fi action stuff, it's, it's pretty great. Um, I don't know about how much I classify it as a horror, but um, setting that aside, I had a really good time watching it, and I was actually surprised that... Um, I don't know. I, I, some of the performances were being so as good as they were. Um, the lead actor, uh, whose name I'm gonna have to look up, Beck, or the the lead detective, he did a great job. Kyle MacLachlan's a favorite of mine. Obviously, I'm a dork about Twin Peaks, so it was pretty rad watching Dale Cooper just flamethrower motherfuckers like it was fucking Vietnam and this motherfucker. Um, I just said motherfucker too many times. Anyway, so there's. Actually, like the cast is what was kind of one of the things that was that was blowing me away about this movie. There are so many fucking familiar faces in this. Like besides Kyle MacLachlan, there's another Twin Peaks personality and um, Chris Mulkey who plays um, uh, Jack DeVries, DeVries, um and plays Hank Jennings on Twin Peaks. So automatically into that, he was the one that robbed the bank at the very beginning, and it's very in line with what his Twin Peaks character was kind of like, except you know maybe a little more haphazard. Um, Let's see, Lynn Shea showed up all of a sudden. Fucking Danny Trejo has one line and then gets shot in the chest. <laughs> I guess that was sort of like his deal at this time, getting those kind of parts. Um, Ed O'Ross, who plays uh, Detective Willis, he was in Six Feet Under. And I kept thinking of, uh, he was, for those who watched that show, it was um, uh, the the Russian florist who like starts dating Ruth and he's like, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. I fucking love that shit so much. I think about that character too much. Um, so it was good to see him in, in something a little more like, uh, I don't know, a, a little less silly of a role for him. Um, Clue Gallagher's in this or Gulager. I don't know. I never did get his name pronunciation correct. I don't think I always say Gallagher. Um, but like all these fucking people are in this movie and maybe it's just because a sign of, uh, the time that it was, you know, made and it was just, these were the guys acting, these were the guys working at the time, but it was, it was good to see a lot of them. It was just every like half hour or so there'd be two or three faces of like, Oh shit, there he is. There's, or there she is. And I don't know. I enjoy that. Um, so it was a little bit of like, 
I don't know, a little bit of fun for that. But, you know, that, setting all that aside, the, the performances I thought were pretty good. And I like the story. It was basically Jason goes to hell, but, you know, without having to center around the fucking monstrously disorienting Jason lore when they released that. So they didn't have to deal with, like, whatever bullshit was going on in that movie. I really don't care for that movie. But this is basically the same premise where you have... Um, a person jumping bodies uh, or an entity jumping bodies and just wreaking havoc. And, um, and this one also has the added benefit of having a uh, good version of that sort of um, in uh, Kyle MacLachlan's character. And I don't know. I enjoy that as a sci-fi sort of like premise. Like I said, this isn't much of a thinker. I I mean, if there's like a a sort of like a subtext to this movie that I'm not seeing, I'd love to hear about it. But like, I I wasn't getting that really. I was just enjoying the ride really. Um, All things considered, I had a good time with it. I thought the score was a little bit much. (laughs) I mean, I I don't know. This kind of like this movie kind of fits into that Terminator era of like action sci-fi. And I really enjoy that sort of thing. But the score kind of like lost me a couple times. There is that scene when they were um, walking into the mannequin factory or whatever the fuck that was, the, 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 the place with all the mannequins. And there's just this really jarring and weird like, like synth blast that just jumped in there. And I, just felt like, I was like, oh my God, it's disorienting and takes me out of the movie. Um, but uh, that's a little bit of a nitpick. But um, let's see, what else can I say? Uh, I don't know. I think that this was just a kind of a fun flick. Um, again, I don't, wouldn't really categorize it as horror, but you know, we've never been too, uh, never been too stern on what we consider horror on this, on this particular podcast because we're not professionals. Um, it had an ambiguous ending, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, I don't know if I loved it or hated it just yet. I'm still sort of digesting it. Um, I think that, I mean, it was clearly intentionally ambiguous because it's either intentionally ambiguous or they just didn't feel right making Kyle MacLachlan shit out a space bug like the villain um, and instead gave him a glowy fun fest to, I I thought at first, I thought, I mean, it's intentionally leading you to think that maybe uh, this character is either healing um, Beck or he is inserting himself in the back. And then the way that the daughter looks at him afterwards, um, the special daughter, which was a fucking weird moment earlier in the film, sort of a callback to that as her sort of trepidation to go over to her father or her father's body anyway, and embrace him. Um, but she eventually sort of like acquiesces and I, I, doesn't maybe gives a bit of a smile. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, I don't know. So it gives an ambiguous ending as to what, like, but if here, here's my thought on that though, is that I think it's a little strange to have your fish out of water character die at the end of a movie and then have a spaceman replace him, a spaceman who doesn't understand Alka-Seltzer, but somehow understands the inner workings of the fucking police department well enough to fool a bunch of cops into thinking he's FBI. I mean, I I don't know. I don't understand any of that shit. That's like, you could call that a plot holy thing, but I mean, that, I mean, for that to be the end of the movie is, I guess I'm still struggling as to whether or not I like that. I usually am sort of like into ambiguous endings, especially when it comes to like identity because in, in sci-fi movies, like uh, shifting identities is sort of like, I don't know, it makes me think of a thing and things like that. Movies, superior movies, but uh, movies that like, um, they don't hand it to you. They let you sort of like figure it out. The problem is that like, the imp- there's no sort of like broader meaning to either interpretation and there's no sort of like, I don't know, the theme of identity sort of like isn't fully fleshed out, I think, enough in this movie to really make, really make that work. I guess you could say, okay, well, you know, he didn't, Kyle McLaughlin didn't feel right leaving this special little girl behind. He had lost his wife and his daughter to this space bug and now wants, and now sees another father uh, about to be removed from another. It's just like, He's like, is he going to be space bug stepdad? I don't understand how that really, how the emotional weight of that works. Um, so I don't know that that's a little bit of a ding for me, I guess I'm sort of talking myself down from that, but, um, yeah, that, that's something to consider. Let's see anything else. This is somewhere between like a, a lethal weapon and a terminator. You know what I mean? Like it, it's, uh, got the sci-fi element. It's more self-serious than, uh, than a lethal weapon, but the police procedural part feels a lot more 
like your lethal weapons and the fucking chasing, especially that first one where they literally have fucking Chris Mulkey barrel through some guys with a pane of glass. That is such like a, like a cliche. And it was hilarious watching it. Like everything about that first scene is so very deeply entrenched in like cliche 80s stuff, 80s action stuff. But like, I kind of loved it for that because it, it didn't like, I don't know, maybe I'm just kind of like, we've gotten to the point where we see more people parodying that sort of thing than we see people being genuine about that sort of like ridiculous overblown Ferrari driving through fucking panes of glass, much mowing over old men in wheelchairs. Um, like, I feel like this movie kind of took that seriously and maybe it's a little refreshing. Maybe that's kind of why I liked it. I don't know, I'll, have to, I'll have to ponder on that a little bit. But overall, I enjoy this movie quite a bit. It's no, like, it's not going to, you know, break my world apart. And uh, it's not, it's not, I don't know, it's not a thinker. I don't know how else to put it. It's not much of a, um, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it has much of a point beyond the spectacle of it, which usually is kind of a bad sign for me. But there's something charming about this. Part of it is just knowing the actors and being interested in that. Part of it is just the, the, the nature of having them do like having all of these very cliched set pieces taken so seriously and done pretty well too. Like, like in terms of, um, of action stunts and that sort of thing. Um, and just kind of like a fun premise. I, I think those things really work to its benefit. It's not going to be a movie that I write a master's thesis on at any time, but it is one that I might toss on from every now and again. I'm pretty glad I, I ended up buying a copy from Amazon. So I'm, I'm glad I did that. Anyway, I wanted to rush this. I only had a few minutes to watch this. I literally leave town today in about an hour. So I, I had like almost no time to record this, but I got to take care of my boy. Thank you, Hydroberg, for your Patreon pick. Um, I had a great time with it. And as far as the score, I'm going to give it a three, um, which I think is pretty fair considering like it's mostly spectacle and in, it's good at that. But um, yeah, like I said, it's, it's not going to like it's not opening my world up. It's not broadening my horizons in any way necessarily, but it is something that I enjoy and I will probably watch again and I would recommend it to friends. And I'm glad, I'm glad it was brought to our attention too, guys. I had never heard of this movie and you know, it, it, it did me good. It hit me real good. Um, yeah. So that's my quick and dirty review with no thinking prior thinking, even less than usual. Um, okay. Bye. All right, well, with uh, Randy's rating of a 3, that's going to put our aggregate at a 3.33. Repeating, of course. Quick mass. Quick mass, quick mass. You got to that real quick, Bob. Hey, my brain. I thought I was maybe going to take over responsibility. (laughs) My brain's on fire tonight. Damn, Um, firing on all cylinders, Bob. All two of them. You're working for that job now that Anthony's hot on your ass. (laughs) That's right, Anthony. (laughs) All over my hot ass, per usual. <laughs> All over it. So that's pretty favorable. Three point three three. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Yeah, yeah. So let's go ahead and jump into our Rotten Tomatoes segment here and see what the critics and users think about the hidden. Certified fresh to death. Take it away, sirs. All right, so we're gonna get into this, sirs. Damn, am I like the fucking? <laughs> 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 yes, you are. Over here? You are the fucking. Um, <laughs> um, so there's no critic consensus, unfortunately. So the numbers are low on this. Total reviews counted is. Oh, fuck. I, sh- <laughs> I should have done it like I did yeah, last time. You with Hellboy. At it. I totally forgot. Oh, well, because um, it's just Bob. Only Bob's going to guess now. Yeah. Um, my bad, my bad. I totally forgot. I was just in autopilot mode. You know how we yeah, do. Yeah, it happens. Um, oh, well, well, Bob, you get to guess alone, I hope. I'm going to win. If you're not within a 15% spread, you lose, Bob, and okay. Anthony takes your job. That's, that's <laughs> you. That's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> these are the stakes where we got to up the stakes. Bob has to be within a 15% spread or he's officially fired for good. Um, Bob, of the 25 critic reviews counted, what do you think they rated this movie? Critics probably didn't go apeshit over job. it. But I, for my job, 
<laughs> my job that pays nothing. Oh no. How will I eat? <laughs> I, so yeah, they're probably relatively favorable. Not like ape shit over this, but you know, it's like a action movie. I'm going to go, I'm going to play it safe. So I don't get fired. I'm going to go with the 70. 70. All right, Bob, you get to keep your job. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sigh of relief. Sigh of relief. You hit the mark. Actually, pretty close, Bob. Good job. Um, 76 is right. the total on this. Right. So this is fresh. It's not served fried. I don't know how many like numbers you have to have to be served fried or even what percent you have to be at. You have to be a little over fresh. But this one is fresh for show. It's uh, 76%. There is no critic consensus. Let me scroll down. Of the 25 critics um, that rated this, 19 were fresh, 6 were rotten. Let me see if I can find a top critic that uh, gave this a fresh. Yes, there's one. There's one that's negative and one that's positive. So let me see. A positive top critic says, powered by a driving rock score, this is by... Wait. This is by turn sleek, reckless, and smoothly effective. That doesn't make sense. This is by turns sleek, reckless, and smoothly effective. Like a Ferrari with a psycho killer at the wheel. There's some typo in there. Does not compute. (laughs) Does not compute. I don't. Yeah. Whatever. You get what he's trying to say, I guess. Um so pretty much almost just like a little synopsis there, but <laughs> um, a negative uh, top critic, uh, too predictable. And even though wickedly fun at times, it's only halfway as awesome as it might have been, which I could see both, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could see that. Like see. there was potential for a little bit more, but it seemed like it didn't, it wasn't concerned with that. And that's fine. But maybe it's a little bit to its detriment, but that's okay. Either way. Um, All right, Bob, let's see audience score. Um, What 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 are the stakes this time? What are you playing for, Bob? Um, Uh, 15%. (laughs) I don't know. Uh, If I don't get this right, then you get to take my job. Bob, if you don't get this right, you can't buy any, or if you can't get within the 15% spread, you can't buy any vinegar syndrome for the month of May. All right. (laughs) That's very funny. Okay. (laughs) Bob, you couldn't do it for one month. I don't know. We'll see. They're having a sale this, this month. So, you know, Oh, well then you really better get it right, Bob. Then you really are playing for some high stakes, even more than your job, your vinegar syndrome. They're having a halfway to black Friday sale. Oh God. Oh oh God, Uh, Bob halfway. uh, That, that's, that stokes a lot of things for you. 50% Blu-rays. Oh God. Halfway. Halfway to Halloween. Huh? It is halfway to Halloween. I know. Hallelujah. So, excited it's almost halloween season for us here that straight chilling crew (laughs) like three months to go (laughs) that's not even a joke dude it's not after fourth of july we're all like well Uh the next holiday is halloween (laughs) time to bust out the decorations mother truckers (laughs) that is not even fucking exaggeration (laughs) um all right bob so you're playing for your vinegar syndrome we're holding you to it um 15% 15% spread, Bob. You better get it. So audience score. Oh, let me tell you, the Uza ratings, 5,633. So pretty small sample size. This is a hidden gem under, you know, undercover, underground. Not a lot of people knowing about this, apparently. Yeah. You know what's going to be my saving grace this time? What? The straight chilling special. A straight chilling special. You think that's gonna? You think that's gonna deliver you, huh? Because it could be high by. I mean, fifteen percent. Let's see. It can't be higher than an eighty-four if you go with the straight chilling special. And it can't be lower than a what? A quick mass fifty-four. I feel pretty confident about that range. Okay. I'm yeah, gonna, that's a pretty good range for you. I'm gonna go with the sixty-nine straight chilling special. Is gonna be my saving grace. All right, Bob. Well. You're right. The straight chillin' spest has <laughs> has given you your vinegar syndrome back. Um, actually, really close again. Seventy two percent from the audience score, nice. which is uh, the straight chillin' crews coming in a little lower than that. Bob was a little higher. Me and Randy a little bit lower, but not too far off. Yeah, men of the people. Um, men of the people. Yeah, 
pretty close. Ours was what a sixty six average, yeah. seventy two. Ah, six point spread, not too bad. Yeah. Cool. Um, I, I'm gonna try and blast through a little bit of trivia. There's not a whole bunch here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I got. Here we go. Okay. Extra, extra, read all about it. Um, so director Jack Shoulder has gone on to say that of all of his films, this is his favorite. Hey. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, it probably was a lot of fun to fucking make. Probably was. Uh, Michael Nori turned down the role of Martin Riggs in Lethal Fucking Weapon, which was made the same year as this movie set in LA. Wow. And it's also a buddy cop film like this. Um, that role went to Mel Gibson, obviously, if you've seen that movie. I bet he kind of regrets that, though. Pro- Except, would it, would it be, I don't know, Lethal Weapon? Would it be the same without Mel? Hmm. I don't know, but if with any luck he had gotten that role and it was ex- as successful, he would have. It would have been a franchise of like what five movies now? How many are there? There's like four, yeah. four or five. But maybe we never would have got Braveheart. You know what could have been? What could have been? You never know. <laughs> what, could, what this universe could have been? Somewhere out there, there's another alternate reality where that is the case. You know. Um, during an, an interview on TNT in 1994, Claudia Christian mentioned the hidden as being her prior experience with aliens. She said this qualified her to work on Babylon five. Never seen that. This show. qualified her. Yeah, I, I guess her <laughs> being an actress now doesn't have anything There's to like do with one it. alien scene in this. And I'm pretty yeah. sure she wasn't fucking involved at all. So <laughs> <laughs> bitch, slow your roll. Um, Kyle McLaughlin and Chris qualifies me. That's ridiculous. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh well, you know, she's just this talking. Qualifies she's... me. <laughs> she's she's just talking. If she had said this qualifies me to be in Lethal Weapon, then I would have agreed. Like, yes, okay, but this qualifies me to be on Babylon Five. I have alien experience. It's like, there was no alien in this. Yeah, people just said just they people. were alien. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm an alien. Oh, okay. This qualifies me. <laughs> what the fucking? What the fuck? <laughs> All right, sorry. No, it's good, man. Uh, Kyle McLaughlin and Chris Mulkey later starred together on Twin Peaks, which I still need to watch. Um. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? Um, the transfer of the alien from De- DeVries into Jonathan Miller was accomplished by stop motion photography. During the stop, stagehands would work at stuffing the creature model into the mock head. Actor William Boyett, upon seeing the alien going into his mouth, was so disgusted he refused to watch and actually left the room. <laughs> Hot <laughs> damn! I love that. Actually, that's pretty great. Uh, <laughs> uh, peace out, bitches! I can't watch this. Yeah, this is terrible. Wasn't that bad? Yeah. Um. Let's see. Although both Gallagher and his quarry inhabit human bodies, they do seem to have different abilities and limitations. Gallagher is able to spot the other in any body by sight, while his enemy cannot. Also, Gallagher seems to be able to repair damage to his host body while his enemy's presence uses up his host in a matter of days, um, which is a fair yeah, fair observation we didn't make, actually. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of pointed out that they, like, implied that they were different species, like, yeah. because even, like, when he transfers body, he doesn't, like, slug out. He's, like, yeah. got a beam or whatever, so, and he's got, like, a special gun uh, that the other one doesn't have, so, um, but, yeah, good good point still, though. Yeah. Um. So the uh, the original ending actually had the uh, the alien who was disguised as the senator getting away. So they kind of changed that. Okay. Uh, the plot of this film, alien criminal and cop living in the bodies of humans on Earth, bears some striking resemblance to Hal Clement's novel Needle, also known as From Outer Space, though the stories are completely different. That's kind of boring trivia. Wish I had read that before I said it. <laughs> nah. Um, the store Brenda as the alien drove into was called Neptune Mannequins. She also passes through a door that says Neptune and finally jumps to her death through a sign that says Neptune. That's pretty cool, actually. Ooh, they must be from Neptune. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, really laying it on thick there. 
Yeah. Do you get it? No, I actually didn't get it, but thanks for telling or me. Or maybe you want a Neptune's moon. So you never know, Bob. Wouldn't it be kind of cool to like live on a moon that's not like <laughs> not the planet, but like that you circle? You know, wouldn't that be cool? Where like. <laughs> Yeah, where it's di- not different. It's perspective like when you order. when you do the rotation, it's not like it's not the moon that you see. It's a fucking planet that you see, and it's like goddamn humongous. That would be. Did you just cool. rip like a huge bong hit before you said that? I or? wish. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the trivia. There, like that's I said, there wasn't a ton. with your boy Soju. It's a new segment <laughs> we're trying out. <laughs> what if this car just started flying, dog? <laughs> flying, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a reference to someone we know in real life who was very high and said that in a car while driving. Um, <laughs> so let's. Uh, I think it's time to officially go hunting. Let's let's talk let's some go cooters. hunting. Cooter of the week. Cooter of the week. Justin, it's been a while since we've reminded our listeners exactly what constitutes a cooter. Um, so, real quick, is. could you could you and summarize? It, yeah, and if you're lost, there's always we did it on purpose, but episode. Uh, 200 yep. right Bob yeah we, we break we it give down the, give the rundown so it was a milestone episode people always asking us what's the cooter what's the cooter so we said reference episode 200 we give the full rundown like deep analysis yep. but let's give let's give a little brush here cooter is a character type um, prevalent in horror movies not exclusive but we've been kind of analyzing the development of the cooter through cinema you know making this sound real official um but essentially we're we're tracking them through four points here um how to spot the cooter smug arrogance is one of them sexual manipulation um sex or or no 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 i'm sorry manipulation smug arrogance manipulation is its own point sexual deviancy is its own point and attire that's probably why we always like miss the fourth yeah. point we're trying to like mesh Blend two together two. so yeah. yeah so yes so um how smug and arrogant are they that's kind of measured a factor how sexually deviant are they um how manipulative are they and uh, what's their attire like that's that's kind of one of the hardest ones to hit the so this Heiderberg, uh, he's he's a he's a hunter he you know he's got his handbook he's <laughs> off often referencing it in the slack channel he's yeah. like keeping other people online he's like bringing people in under his wing and whatnot but um i i can't help but ignore his couple of patreon picks i feel like he's he's doing this on purpose he's helping he's helping us Broaden the, the spectrum. The cooter spectrum. Yeah. yeah, he gave us our first uh, extraterrestrial cooter in the entity, and now, or no, this is our first extraterrestrial. Yeah. He gave us our first paranormal. I can't remember what. Did I say that? Either way, he's given us a broad range of cooters. Also, he picked. He picked. Didn't he pick the birds? The birds. In which yeah. case. I tried to call for a collective cooter in which the suburb itself a is cul de sac of cooters. The cul de sac, yeah, or yeah. the cul de sac is the cooter. Um, either way, though, so this alien, um, I think he mentions he's got a voicemail for us. I think he said his name is Willie, if I remember correctly. I don't like remember him having a name, but I don't know. We'll get in the voicemail segment, Hotline Scream. Yeah. We'll talk about that. <laughs> but um, so, sexual deviancy. Um, he's got so he takes over a stripper's body immediately like fucks a dude and then kills him and then feels himself up yep (laughs) and also you know what i was thinking when that was happening is like if you're the dude and you're having sex with this alien that's inhabited a um a stripper's body you're you're essentially having sex with a corpse, right? I mean, wouldn't that like set the line, Bob? Like, because they're the person is dead. I guess so, but like, and something else is just pulling the strings. She was freshly dead, so you might not know. I guess. Oh, oh Bob, I guess. <laughs> Bob's drawing a line here. I don't know. I'm trying to piece this together. I don't know. I don't know how the alien works, man. Okay, well, either way, so we got the sexual deviancy. Um, smug arrogance, I mean, it's pretty arrogant. It yeah. just it's kind of like general like demeanor. And it's, it's like I it mean it's plans to take over the the country and then I assume the entire world. So Yeah, and he even has a little bit of dialogue where he's like, Fuck these guys, like I can do whatever I want. We could yeah. take over this planet. I mean that's yeah. that's arrogant. Oh um, yeah. Oh yeah. 
it, the attire with the stripper, like it specifically changes outfits. Um, and it's got that ridiculous, like the ass butt bong, hanging like, out leather outfit um and also i would even attach like kind of the sport cars maybe a little bit to the attire like yeah. it's a, kind of the overall demeanor i guess like it loves these fucking red sports cars and it's always like trying to like i guess sexual deviancy it's always trying to like pick on chicks, chicks. yeah it's like with yeah, the finger like, guns and shit with the I finger love guns it. and the ghetto blaster and shit um it's not super manipulative is it like it doesn't try to like it, I mean, it pretends to be other people. So I guess you could kind but, of write yeah. that off as being, but, but then it again, it just does like whatever the fuck it wants. Do, yeah, it yeah. Doesn't, it's not like trying to like be skeevy it's, or anything. It's about oh, okay, to it's start skeevy, doing but, that when it yeah. becomes the senator, but they kill it. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we don't see a whole lot of like it, like, like scheming or plotting yeah. or anything like that. So low on that end, but pretty solid on the other ones. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's he's no sand, he's no varg, but um, but he is an extraterrestrial cooter nonetheless. We've yeah. got our first, our first, I believe. He's on, he's on the scale. He's he's all over the spectrum, really. Yeah, so yeah. solid. And, and now, we're, now we're on to Hyderberg too. We know, we know the uh, motivation behind mm -hmm. these picks. The burbs. Wait, Hyderberg did pick the burbs, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The burbs. The coldest. We've got the coldest sack cooter. We've got the uh, ghost cooter, and now we've got the alien cooter. Yeah, three Hyder three very specific uh, incidences. Variant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They would have their Hyder own chapter in in the handbook, the cooter handbook. He's just he's just financing the. Um, that's what he's doing. He's financing the research. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> financing the. Yes, exactly. He's our financial backer. <laughs> I like that. So yeah, so cool. just another entry, another another blip in the uh, ever growing research that is cooter hunting. You know, we gotta gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Uh, so let's uh, let's go ahead and get into our hotline scream segment here. Um, so we've got three voicemails this week. Uh, three different people called in. We're gonna hear from. Um, also, aka. Uh, voicemails from a place I like to call the further. I can't forget to to say that just just because Randy's not here. <laughs> I, I I wasn't go I was gonna let it slide, uh -huh. and I was like, oh man, oh, almost forgot. No, that's gotta get sorted out at some point. Maybe on like a twenty fifth episode or something. We gotta like, we gotta do something. Our two fiftieth or something. Yeah, we'll figure it out eventually. Yeah. <laughs> it'll only take you know thirty five more episodes. Um, hashtag, hashtag Team Scream. Team Scream. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna run these down first up uh we're gonna hear from our our boy hydroberg here um and then we'll uh we'll, we'll talk about what the man has to say so let's go ahead and hear from him here we go what up nerds it's your boy hydroberg it's calling in the check in you guys watching my patreon pick the week the hidden i know it's not 100 percent horror but it's a pretty fun film it's got some horrific stuff in it um it's fun you know uh, Justin, I want to acknowledge that the uh, parasitic alien cooter is uh, in this movie, uh, especially the scene where he takes the body of a stripper and then starts to grope himself in the in the car. That's pretty cool, horrific. I think so. Um, yeah, hope you guys really enjoyed it. And uh, you know, I'm a little bummed out. I know Randy couldn't be there, but hopefully he'll be able to watch it at one point and give his review later. Uh, I have a uh, would you. Uh, to all you guys, I want to know, would you rather watch the entire biography of Ian Roth or, drumroll, Rob Zombie? And you have to watch every film in whatever order you'd like. All right. Well, uh, just keep chilling, guys. All right. I'll let you go. Later. Hey, Hydroberg. Thanks for calling in, man. And again, thanks for uh, hitting us up on Patreon, choosing this movie. Um, so I think we covered the, the, the alien parasitic cooter pretty thoroughly. And so, yeah, he obviously knew what he was doing. <laughs> he obviously uh, knew. Oh yeah. Always on his mind. Yeah. Um, I like his, what would you rather? I think it's a pretty solid, <laughs> what would you rather? 
it definitely got me thinking because if if you've listened to this cast before, or if I guess if you haven't listened to this cast before, we often shit on both of these people, um, Eli Roth and Rob Zombie. I tend here's the thing: I always like lean Rob Zombie. I I don't have the hatred for Eli Roth that Bob Bob always seems to lay into Eli Roth. So I think that's yours, Bob. In uh, just in case, because his voicemail did break up a little bit, but in case you missed it, his he he asked us a "What would you rather?" question. It was what, "Would you rather watch the entire filmography from Eli Roth or from Rob Zombie?" And um, yeah, that's sort of like an ongoing conversation that we've had with these two directors because they're. Um, uh, I don't know. Their movies aren't aren't particularly great. And to be honest, well, and they're like, I think the biggest thing is they're like icons in like horror yeah, filmmaking. Yeah. You know, like people, oh, Eli Roth is this kind of director in horror. Rob Zombie is this kind of director in horror. And um, and so we give them a lot of shit. I feel like Eli Roth is definitely more on the Bob side, and like Rob Zombie is definitely on my side. Like I just like lay into Rob Zombie. <laughs> yeah, that, um, that's true. I. I so I I want to like both of their movies but I will say like Rob Zombie seems like a kind of cool dude like after seeing ever since i saw his like episode on cribs where you go through his house and he's got like the secret passageways <laughs> he's got a huge movie collection 14 and, years ago i fell in I, love with rob Zombie. <laughs> no he just seems like a cool guy and like a really hard working guy because he puts out like movies and records like constantly man like he's just constantly working so i have i like respect him in a way I mean, eli roth did that whole like history of horror thing he did. And yeah but he's not like not sitting around jerking off bob <laughs> <laughs> he's not doing nothing for sure just because we haven't seen his house this is as strong oh, as your beer argument with oh Suspiria. my gosh <laughs> oh my gosh i'm just saying rob like zombie rob seems Zombie's like how so seems I'm gonna like watch a guy movies. <laughs> seems like a guy I would like to have a beer with. Yeah, and also I, I would I prefer to watch his movies too over Eli Roth. Um for sure. Yeah, so I, I guess yeah. I was, okay, go ahead. Sorry. I, I haven't actually seen all of Eli Roth's movies. I've seen every one of Rob Zombie's movies. Um, but Eli Roth came out with a few recently that I haven't I'm I, I haven't caught up on. Like I still haven't seen Green Inferno. Or it's on Netflix or death wish it's um, I'll have to watch it then. And I also haven't seen uh, the house with the clock in its walls, which is that Jack black kids movie. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but I have seen um, hostel and cabin fever and knock, knock and knock, knock oh, is yeah. one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, yeah, I I had to like stop and be like, I don't really know what Eli Roth's discog or filmography is, honestly. Like, r like I said, that's more of Bob's thing. I actually would like to see Green Inferno. I have seen Cabin Fever, and I have seen Hostel, and I I think there's another one I've seen, but um, I'm just like not familiar. My just general impression of him is like, I don't care for his style. Like, I don't hate yeah. on him. Bob does, but um, like Hostel, you know, like, I don't know. It's just not what I particularly like to watch. The thing with Rob Zombie is I probably would still choose Rob Zombie, unfortunately. <laughs> um, just And it's it might be just a lack of knowing what Eli Roth is. And one of the biggest frustrations I have with Rob Zombie is I do think he has a lot of good ideas. He just like refuse. He has no known man and he refuses to like let anyone like help him or help like shape his craft so it seems like all this like potential gets like wasted away on just sheer like arrogance or like sheer like unwillingness to like have anybody else involved that can maybe make it better so a lot of things like where like oh it might be shot well or oh it might have a really intriguing premise is just ruined by like terrible dialogue and shitty like you know like directing as far yeah. as like the acting goes so it's frustrating because like you can see the shell of what like could be good there um so i still think like rob zombie probably still has more style and probably still has more talent from what i I've seen so unfortunately i probably would watch rob zombie's discography there's still some movies the thing about rob zombie too is i always kind of have hope there's some rob zombie movies i haven't seen that i'm like 
I kind of want to see, but I'm like, fuck Rob Zombie, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I know he's just going to disappoint me, which fucking sucks. Eli Roth. I would probably pick Rob Zombie. Eli Roth also directed um, Hostel 2, and then he's done like some TV oh, stuff. Okay. But I, I don't think TV, TV is uh, considered in this. What would you rather? But yeah, like as far as Rob Zombie goes, I like the first half of House of a Thousand Corpses. And um, I actually like Lords of Salem pretty good. And that's about it. Yeah, I want to see Lords of Salem. There's another one. It's in a, there's like a number or something, right? 31. Yeah. It's terrible. God damn it. <laughs> but I will say, so Richard, that's- Richard Brake, the actor who plays the Night King in Game of Thrones plays a character uh-huh. like this crazy like murder in 31 and his performance is incredible but he's he fucking Rob Zombie fucked it didn't he see so he Richard Brake is the kind of actor like this is how good this man is he's the kind of actor that can take Rob Zombie's shitty horrible dialogue and actually make you care about his character when he's delivering it like that shit is fucking impressive wow nobody That's else in the daddy. movie can do it but he can yeah so man. I see, mean, that's the frustrating part, man, is you yeah. can see like, oh, I could be good, Rob Zombie, if you weren't such an arrogant prick. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, thanks for the Audrey out of there, Hydroberg. Let's go ahead and continue. We still got two more voicemails. Um, so next up, we're going to hear uh, from old stalker Stacy. We haven't heard from Stacy in a minute, so let's, um, let's hear what she has to say. Hey, guys. Um, it's Stacy. I haven't called in a while, and I thought I'd give you guys a call just to say I uh, listen finally finished the American Psycho episode and it was really great um, I loved hearing the commentary on that just because I think it's such a uh, I don't know an interesting concept I remember it like being little and watching it and like when the ending is revealed I'm kind of just like wait what he's not a killer but like watching it as an older person who has dealt with like actually dealt with mental illness now and like you know like those those moments of like tugging back and forth between like am I a good person or am I a bad person it's all very interesting to see like it's like a interesting take on how you just can't take anyone's face value to heart like no matter who these people are or how they're perceived uh, they could be something completely different. They could be a monster. They could be, you know, just, you never know what someone's truly going through or dealing with. So I think that's really interesting because I think that, like, only people with, like, mental illness issues can kind of see that perspective. I don't know making sense but anyway I also think it's really rad that it was directed and co-written by a woman I never knew that until listening to this uh, and I think that it's stylized like perfectly Christian Bale is amazing uh, just I don't know I think it's a perfect movie as well I'm going to agree with uh, Randy and give it a five um, probably not going to rewatch it ever again just because it's kind of a little too much for me nowadays but I appreciate it as a film for sure. Anyways, guys, uh, you guys are doing great. Uh, keep it up. Talk to you later. Bye. Stacy, I got to say, if you watched American Psycho when you were just a little kid, you got some big old balls. That's crazy, man. That's a hard movie to watch as an adult. Yeah, I can't even remember the first time I watched it. I mentioned like I've seen it so many times. Bog fucked me last week, man. I could oh, have really... get out of here with that <laughs> bullshit. I could have really given some really good, interesting, uh-huh. unique perspective on American uh-huh. Psycho. You better read those text messages, son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, that, that is uh, one aspect of the movie that we really didn't talk about um, last week was like, uh, Patrick Bateman uh, ha- potentially having like a, you know a mental illness like I, he's kind of a psychopath or whatever but um, when you that's some, something I mentioned yeah yeah I was gonna say you <laughs> it does kind of lend itself to what you were talking about trying to find like the humanity in this like very very difficult character 
Um, yeah. It, it kind of goes hand in hand with that. And it's an interesting way to look at that movie because the character is definitely created for you to just despise. And, you know, he does Christian Bale sells it, you know, but that is like, it adds a whole new layer to that movie and allows you to get even more from it. Um, it's a good movie, man. Yeah. Good ass and movie. I think she even brought up the whole good thing. Like, am I a good person? Or am I a bad person? Like even taking that further and trying to think like Patrick Bateman, like, because I said like toward the end, he calls his lawyer and he's like crying like openly, but at the same time, like that's the only time he gets like physical relief, yeah. you know? Like, so it's like this thing, like I was saying, he's even like sexually like deprived. Like he can't like, he's not actually enjoying the sex until he's hurting somebody. He's like, he's not actually enjoying the company of people until he's murdering, you know? So like, yeah. so like it's like a physical response and like, man, you know, it's, it's hard. But then to find out that that's only something he's mentally dealing with. And like, it's, it's hard because you know, he's a huge, or you think he's a huge piece of shit, but it is, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough to be like, am you know maybe he's actually keeping it all under wraps and that's something he's really struggling to deal with yeah he's just barely keeping it on the tracks but he is managing to keep it on the tracks you know yeah it's yeah like, so it's like well <laughs> you he, know from that perspective kudos really you know yeah yeah it's yeah, it's interesting is yeah there's a lot to pick apart in that movie good stuff thanks for calling stacy it's good to hear from you as always um uh, we got one more voicemail here to play. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hear from Michael calling in from the horror apocalypse. Michael. Michael. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and hear from uh, Michael. See what he has to say. Hey, what's up guys? It's Michael from more apocalypse, uh, giving you your weekly call. Um, I just got been listening to the American Psycho episode, and then I also went ahead and listened to your uh, Night of the Creeps episode. Um, I didn't think I would disagree with you guys so much, but I do. I, I did not like American Psycho. Uh, I thought the book was much better than the movie. I thought the movie went too hard with the, the 80s theme of, you know, the decade of excess. I thought it went a little too hard with that. The, the only thing I actually really liked about American Psycho was the fact that it opens up so many philosophical discussions on whether or not Patrick really killed anyone. Um, but all in all, I think I would probably give the movie about a two out of five. Uh, my, my favorite bit of trivia, and I don't think I heard, uh, Randy mention it was that Ellis was so bored uh, writing, I guess he contributed with the script as well, that he originally included a musical number at the top of the World Trade Center, uh, and it was supposed to be set to Barry Manilow's Daybreak, so I actually kind of would have loved to have seen that, just to see what how it would have changed and the juxtaposition to the rest of the, the episode, but um, other than that, I wanted to go ahead and uh, give you guys my two cents, I also wanted to go ahead and answer your question um, uh, to me, whether or not what, what my island movie would be. And first off, uh, Robbie, I, what the hell? I ain't no hollaback girl, okay? So let's just get that out of the way now. Um, but I think my, my movie, what I would want to watch, uh, if I could only watch one movie for the rest of my life, is probably the first Matrix. I'm a huge Matrix fan. Um, it's every time I see it, I, I find something new. I learn something new. Uh, it's just, it's probably one of my favorite movies and it's pretty close to cinematic perfection. Uh, yeah, there's some plot in the, 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 uh, script and the, the way it was worded, the plot, and it just got worse as the sequels came out. But that first movie, the way it was filmed, the color schemes, the, uh, the cinematography, the angles, the creating bullet time for cam for the cameras, things like that is just near perfection. Uh, but if I had to pick a horror movie, it's Hellraiser, hands down. Um, Hell Priest is just fantastic, and he's probably my favorite villain of all time. But for you this, this week, I am posing a would you rather question. And this one I found actually pretty, pretty interesting. Would you rather have terrifying nightmares every night for the rest of your life, or see scary things that weren't really there? Uh, which would you rather, and why? So, anyway, guys, great episode. And as always, I enjoy listening to you guys, and uh, I'll smile you later. See ya. Few times I've been round that track, Michael. You are too a holiday <laughs> girl. Ooh, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree on many things, apparently. <laughs> yes, no joke, man. Uh, I've this is the first sort of it wasn't like totally negative, but the first negative review I've heard for American Psycho. Uh, it seems like everybody kind of digs it, but that's interesting to hear. I've never read the book though. Maybe I, I think that's a big thing yeah. because I I have read some books and then going into movies where like the movies on itself and that's. A, 
it sets an expectation that can never really be met because there's so much in a book that's explored like psyche wise or like you, you get to know the character so much more intimately than you can really do in almost any film. And you have like unlimited time. Like it just takes as long. Like if you have a thousand pages or whatever, it's just as long as it takes to read it. But in a movie, like especially when dealing with the psyche of somebody, it's almost impossible to do. So I've always found that, you know, it's it's really hard to separate the ideas of reading a book first and watching a movie. It's just oh, I feel like it's always going to bring down the opinion of a movie. I don't think I've ever like heard somebody. I don't think anybody's like opinion of a book. I don't think I've ever heard an opinion of a movie as being better than the book. Like I don't. Yeah, it it probably I, I probably exists somewhere, but I've I couldn't think of an example off the top of my head. Um, yeah so i mean maybe the closest thing is like the shining is like in its own right equally as good as the book like it but in as a separate yeah. entity but i mean it's so hard to read a book and then separate your feelings and thoughts about characters and stuff like that from a movie so let's uh let's tackle his what would you rather question okay. good one another good one yeah another good one so would you rather have terrible nightmares every night for the rest of every your life night. or see terrible things in real life that are not there uh you want to you want to take it man yeah i i would do the see terrible things one really? i gotta get my sleep and i don't and i don't i'm one of those people i don't have trouble sleeping i sleep and even like even like in my um like as i keep getting older like i'm one of those people who can still sleep in if uninterrupted to like 11 o'clock on a saturday morning like if i want to sleep in i sleep in and i sleep pretty good and i love to sleep so i would hate to be interrupted every night and that's one of those things too i feel like if i could see things like if i'm conscious and i see horrible things like you're in your conscious state of mind so you have maybe a better ability to cope with it like especially if you're seeing it every day like to just kind of it makes me think of that movie um a beautiful mind where eventually he just deals with the fact that those people are like in the background of his life you know um and you can tackle that with like a rational mind but when you're sleeping you can't like control your mind it's like things so you you can't just be like i'm not going to be scared i'm not going to be scared it's like every single fucking night for the rest of your life you're gonna be fucking scared it's just like your you know your sleeping mind it can't ration it out like like you know it's just that would fucking suck and then that would ruin your day too because then you never have sleep so really it's just a lose lose I think I would go with the dreams, the nightmares. Really? Yeah, because I, for one, never remember my dreams ever. So, uh, okay. Yeah, I might like wake up and feel a little off, but I'm not going to remember what I dreamt about. And also, like, I don't ever have nightmares w- that wake me up. So I assume I'll still be able to sleep through the night. So uh, huh. it seems like Man. that would probably be the path of least resistance for me personally. Okay. I go with that. Yeah. But you know, if I'm like at work and I see this fucking random creature pop up and I just like freak the fuck out, I'm not into that. I'm not into that. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you could ration it out or like your rational mind and be like, well, it can't after a certain amount of time, be like, it can't hurt me. So it's really just like, we start to watch movies that are fucked up and like, we get to a point where we're like, that wasn't that fucked up <laughs> but to other people they're like what the fuck what is wrong with you that was really fucked up I and mean, we're watching like martyrs over here and we're like oh yeah that was pretty bad but uh, but like other bad. people are like fucking throwing <laughs> up and shit so i don't know i feel like eventually you could just like numb yourself as yeah. we have yeah but you know movie's a movie i don't know whatever yeah i mean you watch vinegar syndrome like every day rob i mean you're already seeing terrible things every day that's true and uh (laughs) i'm digging it apparently i keep doing it to myself i know you Uh, might like it rob (laughs) popping that cute cute thanks for calling in michael it's always a pleasure to hear from you hope all is well with everybody calling in this week um so let's uh i do have some news let's blast through some news real quick to round out the show blast it Extra, extra, read all about it. All right, so we got a new trailer dropped today, actually, uh, for a movie we've talked about before. It's coming down the pike, uh, directed by Alexander Aja, um, who you may uh, know from High Tension. He also did that Hills Have Eyes remake. He also did Piranha 3D and 3DD and 
I want to say a couple other movies that I, I can't think of right now. But anyway, uh, uh, he dropped a trailer for his new movie called Crawl, um, which is getting a release on July 12th of this year. It's produced by Sam Raimi, which is pretty fucking cool. Um, so this movie is basically about a uh, Category 5 hurricane hitting Florida and uh, this daughter, she's uh, trying to pick up her father who was stuck in his home during the flood and uh, there's an alligator that is uh, chasing them throughout the house. So they have to kind of escape this alligator run amok in the midst of a, of a hurricane. Um, so I don't know, man. How'd you feel about this trailer? How'd it hit you? How did you feel about this trailer, Bob? I'm psyched about this trailer, to be honest. Yeah. So it I figured. Yeah. I figured. It, Poor Bob. I like I, I like <laughs> Alexander Aja and I like Sam Raimi. So Aja like is known not to not pull punches. Like all of his movies are like kind of heavy hitters. They're relatively gory. And also like this is very close to home as far as the plot, you know, being from Florida, dealing with hurricanes pretty regularly and whatnot. And also, it reminds me of Deep Blue Sea. It's got kind of a Deep Blue Sea vibe, which I'm down with. So all that, I'm down. Yeah. I think I'm going to start plotting your intervention, Bob, because I think <laughs> I think the vinegar syndrome is really starting to lower those standards. <laughs> okay. I, okay. I think I think you're becoming numb to what quality is. Um, uh, no. I, and I even said it from the, I remember you when you originally read the premise and you're like, that sounds cool. And I was like, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I think it sounds cool. Uh, dude. I don't know. And again, I mentioned before, like we're from Florida. I've seen many, many gators. Them bitches are lazy as shit. Most of the time, them bitches are just laying around on the golf course. I've seen somebody go over like to move on a golf course. Somebody go over and just like poke it with poke it with a golf. And it just like just scurries away into the water. And also <laughs> sometimes they eat your children at Disney, you know, shit happens. Your chill- yeah. Yeah. Your two year old. Yeah. Your two year old <laughs> child. Sure. Sure. I like none of these people are two years old in this movie. They're like fighting for their lives and they're like trying to hide in a shower. Like, I wish, no. I wish no. that, I mean, it's a movie, man. I wish Andy was here uh, sure. to talk about this because he had this uh, art teacher back in high school who used to say, Say, and I don't know why he said this or what he even really meant by it, but he used to say, Gator in the water, I be in the boat. Gator in the boat, <laughs> I be in the water. I don't That's know what awesome. that means, but he used to say that shit. Some, I don't know, <laughs> crust, crusty by. Florida artist. Damn. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I just, uh, this, like, I don't know. No, I don't. I don't think it looks good. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, agree to disagree. Yeah. I, guess. I mean, yeah, I, I just like, I don't know. I guess that's just not what I'm craving from a movie. Come out. Yeah. Like deep blue sea exists. Yeah. Piranha like exists. Like, yeah. Jaws exists. Yeah. Like Anaconda exists. Yeah. Like the, what, uh, arachnophobia exists. I don't know. I guess that's not what I'm wanting out of like movies these days. I don't mind that it's coming out or that's being made. And if it's good, then awesome. But yeah. I don't know. That's just not something that's really, I'm looking to scratch that itch, you know, like what kind of, what kind of new animal can we run away from? Like, how can we have these people trapped? And like when the gator comes down, like gets the rescue guy, like, dude, oh my God. And like, I'm wondering, are they going to justify them as some kind of like super gators? At least in like Deep Blue Sea, they were like <laughs> sharks with like lasers and or whatever. Oh, we cut into their brains. But like, if they're just like, these are what gators are like, it's like, mm. gator bait, <laughs> nah. gator bait. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm down. It's, it's going to be pretty much, uh, what, Another th- four, six weeks into hurricane season. So it's, I'm yeah. down. Another I'm down. two and a half star, Bob. Maybe three star with the beer. Mm, oh better God. than sus- with a good, better than Suspiria with a good 2018. Beer. We'll see. Oh, <laughs> gracious. Let's continue. Let's move along. Um, so there's not a trailer for this one yet, but the news came out today. Uh, our buddy Mick G. Um, who he started uh, directing like a whole bunch of uh, music videos and whatnot. Uh, we we covered his movie, The Babysitter, that was on Netflix um, year before last, I think, I want to say. Um, so he's got a new movie coming out on Netflix. It's, it's going to be released on May 24th, and it's a science fiction adventure movie called Rim of the World. 
Um, the plot synopsis is as follows. The summer camp at rim of the world has barely begun when four misfit teenagers find they've got bigger problems to face than learning how to canoe and climb ropes. When aliens suddenly invade the planet alone in a campground, once teeming with people, the kids are unexpectedly entrusted with a key that carries the secret to stopping the invasion without any adults or electronics to help guide the way. It's clear what they must do band together, conquer their fears and save the world. Uh, so it looks, there's a couple pictures here. It looks kind of like they're cashing in on that eighties vibe. Um, yeah, I don't know. It could be fun. I like Mick G's style. I like how the babysitter was shot. Yeah. It's very, it looks and like a music that. video. He, and well, and he did it well. Like he got for like a movie with like younger actors and stuff like that. He yeah. got a lot out of them. Um, I like that movie. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know. And it's an interesting premise. Like, well, I don't know. I, I like as you're reading it, I kept going back and forth. I was like, I personally want it to be more horrifying, but yeah. if it's more adventure, I mean, and he can do it well, then that's okay too, I guess. You know, like I don't know. I was kind of wrestling with that. I was like, well, I want some horror news, but this sounds more like yeah. you know some well, goony shit. But exactly, uh, you know, I guess it could go either way. Yeah, it looks like more Goonies, more Stranger Thingsy ish kind of stuff. So yeah, it's sort of some people are getting kind of yeah. sick of that vibe, and I, I get it, I get it. Yeah. But you know, if you know, every once in a while you get an '80s throwback movie, I'm down with it. It's fine. Yeah, I, I doubt yeah. it's gonna blow my mind, but I'll probably watch it, and I'm sure it'll be a good time. Sure. Yeah. I'm. I'm open. I'm open to the possibility. Yeah. And at least it's like original too. You know, Randy's always bitching about things yeah. getting remade and books and whatever. And, yeah. and, you know, at least this dude's like coming out with some like original shit, even if he's like riding on like a trendy thing, like, oh, it's about the age or it's like, yeah, fuck, it's like original. Fuck it. You know? Yeah. You heard, you heard it here first, folks. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck it. Um, uh, so what did you think about that uh, new child's play poster that is so if you haven't if you guys are unfamiliar with it um, was they, that real that was real yeah so it is? yeah so there the, I thought I thought it was a mock-up I honestly like I saw it but I didn't think it was real so Toy Story 4 and the child's play remake are being released on the exact same day um, June 21st of this year. So child or, or I'm sorry, uh, Toy Story 4 came out with this poster and it's like kind of a plain poster. It just says June 2019. It's got Woody standing there like kind of holding his hat. And then um, Child's Play kind of took that poster and did their own little take on it. It says Child's Play June 21st. And then it's got like Chucky's bloody tennis shoe walking out of the picture. <laughs> and then it's got like Woody's hat laying on the ground and his arm and like stuffings coming out of his arm as if he was <laughs> murdered. So it's kind of, I thought it was pretty funny, man. To I thought it was pretty honest. funny too. I hope I can get my hands on one of those, but like, I hope that shit comes out in Korea. I don't know if it would, but uh, if I could get my hands on it, that would be dope. But I, didn't, I didn't realize that was real. Yeah. I didn't even think about that actually being printed. I got to ask drew if he's going to get copies of that or if he has, maybe yeah. I can, maybe I can grab one. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, yeah, that's um pretty funny, man. I th- I honestly think that putting your movie out on the same day as Child's Play 4 is like you're just asking to fucking fail. Even though like the two genres are so completely split, like older people still yeah, love Toy Story. Everybody's going to go see Toy everybody Story. Everybody loves except, Toy Story. Except I I mean everybody loves it. I'm like not super excited that Toy Story 4 is coming out to be completely honest, but um but still, I love Toy Story. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know, man. That's risky business. But I, I enjoyed this poster. I thought it was pretty funny. Honestly. Yeah, I like I like the I like the balls on it. Yeah, got some balls on it for sure. Um, but that's pretty much all I had in the news for this week. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're gonna be back next week with a brand new episode, as always. Um, we're going to be talking about another Patreon pick, actually, uh, as chosen by none other than old Jim G baby himself. We're going to be talking about the frighteners from 1996, um, which uh-huh. is a movie I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go in blind again. Yeah, I'm going good. in. Do it. Do it. Do it. Some Peter Jackson. Um, so Peter Jackson. Oh, it's going to be a delayed episode. And then do we need to warn people? Oh, yeah, that's a good point. We're going to have to record. Actually, it might not be. Uh, Still, Randy no. might be able to make it. Oh, pro- it most likely will be a few days later than normal. Just 
probably expect that to happen, I would say. But who knows? Um, until then, please rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. Um, I think we are, we, we're one review away on iTunes from having 50 reviews. So if y'all want to chip in and help us hit that 50 Let's mark. Let's make it a positive one so yes. Bob doesn't lose his <laughs> shit. <laughs> yes, please do make it positive. That'd be great. Um, but I'll, that's like a, a genuinely very easy way to support the show. If, you're, if you've been listening to us for a little while, um, if you could uh, uh, leave us a, a rating and a review on iTunes, it really does help people find our show um, that don't know we exist. That, that like gets calculated calculated into whatever iTunes algorithm madness is out there. And it just makes it easier yeah. for people to find us when they're searching for movie or uh, like movie review shows like ours. Um, so if you do that, we'd love it. Um, also, you can find us on Twitter at str eight underscore chilling. We are on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. You can send us an email through our website, straight chilling podcast.com. Um, if you want to join our Slack channel, uh, just let me know on any one of those social media platforms and I can send you a link to join us on Slack. We talk about the movie that we review each week as well as we're talking about Game of Thrones. We've been talking about in-game. We talk about music. We talk about spooky stuff, not spooky stuff, all kinds of, all kinds of good shit. Um, just a reminder, we got another Joe Bob watch party this Friday, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us for that. And um, I think that, that pretty much covers everything. Um, so until next week, as always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling.